Okay. Um, so I don't have anybody uh, joining here. Uh, had a late start, had some technical difficulties. Um, not actually related to why I was, uh, why I said I might be late a bit. Um, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started, um, and we'll see if anybody joins here or not. So, as usual, I need to get um, things running here. So, let's go ahead and start our dev box. And um, I'm going to have to get logged in here probably. So, let's. Um, All right. Um, get logged into my Leo online so I can accept the assignment as usual here. Finally, all right. So yeah, I've been experiencing some network problems today. Um, so I had to move locations. Uh, I still seem to be having some issues here. So um, let's try it again. I'm going to pause this recording here until I get these sorted out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so um, so this week we're ready to work on um, on our assignment seven. Uh, So, uh, long class here. Okay, there we go. Um, on the let me. See. I think about it though, I need to log into my other account here. So, um, my student account I've been using for demonstrations here. So, I'm still log in now. Okay, yep, I am. So, okay, let's go ahead and accept the assignment. So, assignment seven, uh, we just finished working with linked lists. Um, and in assignment seven, uh, we're going to start looking at uh, queues, queue data structures. So there, finally got this up. Um, as usual, then let's go ahead and we're going to do the preliminary steps. I haven't done those yet. So we've got the uh, the repository copied. Uh, let's get the URL cloned. Um, off the old project, create a new one, put it into sync assignment. And um, yes, now we have it. Oh, now we have it cloned. Um, we can configure, hopefully. Uh, and then we are ready to test out that it builds as usual. So, um, let's open up the tests here. And 
and I'll do a clean and make all as usual. You know, you want all that to build, um, and then you should get back a message that when it's done, about the terminal will be used. Uh, we should be able to run tests. Okay, so yeah, we've got some tests running uh, on this assignment already. For you. So those are all probably testing the the array based version of the stack and the the old uh, the, the linked list version of the stack. Okay. So did I say Q? So so um, yeah. So we're going to be uh, 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 implementing some things with stacks here today for this assignment. So I still don't have any um, anybody um, join me. I hope that doesn't mean that. I have a technical problem here that people haven't been able to get on um, besides the late start, maybe. So, as usual, I'll post this um, after the fact for people to look at. Um, so, uh, let's let me go ahead and create my issues as well. Um, I haven't done that yet. So, um, We'll just start with issue one as usual. So for for uh, task one, um, the um, Um, okay, yep. Yeah. So we need to go ahead and start by implementing the push and pop methods um, for the, the, the linked list version of our stack here. So, uh, uh, like with our list last time, um, we've got basically a, a hierarchy of. of, of um, an, an, uh, an abstract base class. Um, so we've got a, um, a stack API defined in the stack the HPP. So our base class for our stack, uh, again, this is right from both of our textbooks that you should be reading along with here. Um, so the most important kind of methods of a stack are, you know, to be able to access the top item of the stack um, and then to be able to push and pop things onto it, right? So our first task is to get the push and the pop working for the L stack. Um, so um, there is an array-based version of, of, of a stack. So again, the, the A stack uses a, um, um, a, a, an array of type T, array of, of, of Ts, for values to hold the items in the stack, right? Um, and as we've been doing, you know, it dynamically alloc dynamically shrinks or grows this array of values if you push things onto the stack and there's not enough room in the values to hold those, right? So if you look at um, the um, a stack .cpp, um you can get an idea. I mean, the, the signatures for, you know, so, uh, as, as we talked about for the most recent assignment, and, and as a lot of people discovered, um, your signatures for the array-based version will be pretty similar, um, and there'll even be a lot of code um, that's uh, similar. So um, yeah, so here's the, the push and the pop. You know, so in both cases, uh, our push is going to take a value as input, and it's just going to put that onto the stack. Uh, the um, like so for the linked list version, you won't have to grow it. Uh, you just need to put the, the value um, onto the end of the linked list. Um, and the pop um, should return, should just take the value off. Uh, it's not going to return the value. That's what the top does. So, so the, top, the pop just removes the, the value from the top of the stack, right? 
that's kind of how uh, the stack API is traditionally defined, how, how it works, right? Um, so, but yeah, in both cases, you ought to be checking if it's empty and throwing an exception um, if it's empty. Um, so for the linked list version, um, you know, this will be similar to the, the, the regular list that we did for the previous assignment six. Um, to, to push an item onto the stack, we have to um, create a new node dynamically, and um, uh, we do have to handle the special case if the stack is empty, right? So if it's empty, then then the uh, the top node just becomes the um, the new node, right? So for a stack, you don't have to really keep track of the front and the back, right? Um, so so unlike like a list, um, or at least unlike the list that we implemented last week. Uh, you really only need to be able to access the top of the stack. So that's the only place that you're going to be pushing and popping items onto, right? Um, so uh, we're going to be basically just using the, that the one pointer, the top node. Um, and then this, this would be kind of like, well, it, it'll work either. It'll, it'll be similar to, to either um, pushing front or pushing back for the list. Uh, you can think of it both ways. Um, but um, since we want to make it easy to um, to access the, the, the top node, the way that we're going to be doing it for our stack is that this new node becomes the top node and, and its next pointer points to the previous top node. So, so that's how we're going to do it. So, so I'll, get you, I'll get you started on the push here. Um, and the pop as well. So, so the first task is to both do both the push and the pop, right? So as usual, um, we'll want to start by uncommenting um, our tests for um, uh, for our task one. So in this case, um, the probably you know probably two set of, of tests for task one, uh, one for the push, um, and one for the pop. Oh well, the first one actually is calling both push and pop. So um, So, so yeah, there's two tests, but but they're one of them is just testing the stack with integers, and one is just testing it with um, with um, strings. So, so uh, what it kind of means though is that that uh, yeah, unlike in a previous assignment, you are going to have to at least get the stub functions for both the push and the pop working before you can get it to compile here. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and and, and get the I'll get the stubs going for you guys um, on this video here. So, uh, like we had before, um, um, we will want to uncomment the um, virtual um, abstract functions, the pure virtual functions, push and pop um, in our stack base class. So I'll do that first. Um, and then, uh, so, so either way here, so um, I could copy these or I could copy them from my, my a stack, uh, uh, that h that the header file, um, get myself started. Um, let's copy these here. So this, this should be the same signature uh, that we need to implement both for the, our array-based version um, and our linked list base version here. So, um, so um, so kind of the same way I'd like for these to end up being defined 
after the clear function to be part of adding access and removing values from the stack. So we'll put our push and pop there. Um, and then let's go ahead and add stub functions um, to list.cpp uh, after clear here. And um, to make it relatively quick, I'm going to start by using push and pop from my array based version. Um, and just remove the, the, the code that's the array base starting point. So if we take these functions from, from the A list, put them in here. Um, so yeah, somebody, so I guess, I guess uh, people are able to join here. Um, let me know if you can hear the video, the, the audio. So, but I've, I've started um, recording and started working on stuff. I'm still on task one here. Though, so. chat too or just in case um so anyway yeah so after after pulling those over this is the quickest way to get a stub function working for um for both last week and this week uh, just as long as you know you're, you're careful you know so um you know we should re read back over the documentation um and uh, rewrite anything that doesn't pertain anymore so in this case method will create a new node dynamically uh, and uh, uh, push it to be the new top node of our linked list based stack just as an example um, so yeah so so you know we are an L stack but otherwise, the signature should be the same. But and of course, though the implementation um, is the same, and um, um, we're not dynamically managing memory, um, or well, not an array. We are dynamically managing nodes. We have to create a node here. Uh, but but yeah, it's a void function, so I really don't have to do anything to get um, a, um, a sub function working here. Uh, so we can make certain that then compiles and runs still. Uh, likewise for pop, pop is a um, doesn't take any input parameters and it's a void function as well. Um, so this should also be a trivial uh, constant operation for a linked list implementation as well. Right, um, but again, uh, oh, though, although in this case, um, uh, we do need to check if it's empty and um, uh, throw an exception. So this code should probably just work uh, the same way here. Although I'll make certain that the uh, message works. The, the message is uh, changed for our L stack version of pop. All right, but otherwise I think that, that should work, All right? So, um, So again, yeah, as usual, so that we uncommented those, we added our sub functions for our first task. Um, you should test, make certain everything still builds. So I'll build it. Um, and we'll run our tests. So you should be expecting um, that it builds and runs, just, just failing again. So um, in this case, um, we'll be failing. The first one should be the one on line 56 here. Uh, oh, so that's pretty far down. So, um, so, so a lot of this stuff. Um, so yeah, I guess I already gave you like the implementation of string um, from the L stack and some other stuff. Um, oh, that, that's because um, you're going to be implementing some stuff both in uh, L stack and A stack um, this week here. So, so yeah, the only thing we have to implement um, for the linked list version of the stack is the push and the pop. 
Um, and then, um, oh no, uh, so I'm wrong. So um, uh, that you're, you're actually just gonna be mostly implementing some functions using uh, L stack and, and A stack. So, so the heart of, of our assignment is um, uh, actually using your stack class instead of um, um, implementing member functions of it, All right? So, uh, but yeah, let's finish this up here. So, so you do have to kind of warm up by implementing push and pop here. Um, oops. Um, all right, so anyway, if you do the stubs like I showed you, um, yeah, so the, the first thing that'll fail is, is uh, not until we actually start testing, pushing some items on there uh, and popping them off, right? So, so I won't show you the implementation of push and pop, but um, see if anybody has any questions over it. So, so once you get your stubs working, push should be pretty similar to um, um, the um, push to the front that we had last week that you had to implement. Right, so um, so like we said, uh, for the linked list version, you have to create a new node dynamically. And then you kind of have two cases. So if the stack is currently empty, then the top node just becomes that new node, okay? So again, um, for people that joined kind of after I started talking about this, um, one difference from our uh, our linked list version of the stack from our linked list version of the list that we had uh, for the last assignment is we really only need to keep track of one node, the top node, right? Because um, we're gonna be pushing and popping items basically from the top of the stack. So conceptually, we just think of the, uh, uh, you know, of just keep track of whatever the top node is and yeah, if the stack is empty, so initially if the stack is empty, the size is going to be zero and the top node is just going to be null. So when the stack is empty, you just have to point the top node to that new node that you create, right? Um, if the stack is not empty, then basically you just have to, um, Um, so you want your new node's next pointer to point to the current top node, right? So after you create your new node, um, set new nodes next to be the current top node, and then you just reset uh, top node to be pointing to that new node. And then voila, you've pushed your um, item, this new item to the top of the stack for your linked list you know, implementation of the stack, right? So that's all you need to do for push. Um, so uh, for pop, um, if you do what I just showed you in the video, um, um, I mean, if you copy a, a, the, the A stacks version, um, um, you basically have to do the same thing uh, for, for testing uh, and throwing an exception, right? So again, if, if we try and pop from an empty stack, um, you should throw an exception to tell the um, user of your stack class that um, oops, that's illegal. Um, you shouldn't be trying to pop from an empty stack, right? Otherwise, um, the pop method um, kind of does the reverse. So all you have to do is repoint the top node. Um, Um, so I give kind of an algorithm here. So, so you might want to use a temporary pointer um, to point it to the current top node because you need to also dynamically, so don't, so be a good manager of dynamic memory. So you need to delete the top node once you successfully pop it from our linked list version of the stack. So, so once you kind of remember the current top node, then you can move, you can safely move the, the top node to point to the next node in the linked list. Uh, and then you want to call delete to delete the old top node. And then you want to update the size, um, which has been reduced by one, right? And here you don't have to worry about the, the, the stack becoming empty because if you only had one item at the top of the stack, um, its next pointer should be null. 
So, um, you know, again, uh, as long as you correctly follow this, this step to initialize the next pointer to be the null pointer, as talked about here, um, if you're popping the, the, the last item from the stack, when you move the, the temp, when, it, when you move the top node, um, it will become null. And then when you, when you decrement the size by one, the size will become zero, and you'll correctly have a representation of an empty stack in that case when you pop the, the one, the, the, the only item that you have from your stack. Um, all right, so hopefully, I mean, you know, this is pretty similar to stuff that you did on the last assignment or two. So hopefully, uh, especially the last assignment. So I meant this to be kind of a warm up, but hopefully everybody can get that one up and running uh, relatively quickly, right? So besides that, I think everything else um, was implemented for you on the L stack. So you have like the string method. Um, you already have the top method, which just returns the value for whatever the top node is pointing to, both for the L stack and, and the A stack. Yeah. Um, all right, so questions about, about task one there? Hopefully everybody can hear me, right? I, um, I didn't get a chance to, to check that the audio was good, but nobody has been complaining about it so far. So. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, sorry for the late start. So um, there was actually, although I did mention something in the announcement, that wasn't the reason for the late start. I had some technical difficulties and internet was down at my um, office, so I had to move locations. So. Um, all right, so tasks two, three, and four, um, and five um, are all then actually going to be implementing um, methods that use um, our stacks. So, um, so let's look at that. Okay, so unlike Unlike other assignments, you're going to actually be modifying code in two locations here. Well, um, uh, you're going to be modifying code in the L list header, like we just did, um, and, and the L list um, dot cpp file. Sorry, L stack. Don't want to confuse people. So, so the L stack that um, HPP and, and L stack dot cpp files. Um, but then for task two. Uh, we need to be modifying stuff in the stack functions.hpp and the stack functions.cpp. All right. Um, so this goes back to, um, so for these tasks, these are just regular functions. So these aren't member functions of a class uh, that, you, that you have to implement. Right. So this goes back to, you know, we, we've done some assignments where you just wrote regular functions as well. So, so we're doing something similar again here for task two. Um, so, so here you don't have like a good um, example of the signature to copy, but, but maybe I'll give you the first one here. So for do parentheses mass, uh, match, um, so let, let's um, actually, so let me go ahead and go to the, um, uh, tests here. So, 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 oh, oh, I forgot. Um, um, after you uncomment and get it compiling and, and, and maybe even get it working for your, um, your first unit test, uh, you should, don't forget to uncomment. The, the second one should pass because it, it's just testing uh, your push and pop with, with uh, a stack of strings instead of a stack of ends. But, but yeah, hopefully, um, to get it working for the first test case, there's just a second test case for your push and pop. But those should both work uh, if you get your push and pop working. Um, but uh, but yeah, you should be able to uncompile those if you wanted to, and uh, you'll just have more stuff uh, uh, failing. But it should compile and run. Okay, uh, anyway, so moving on to task two. So for task two, the tests are in the um, uh, test stack functions, the CPP. 
right? So let's let's start by uncommenting um, our unit test for the do parentheses match because uh, if nothing else, this will give you kind of um, an example of the. Um, the signature for the function that you have to write for do parentheses match. So do parentheses match takes a string as input um, and it's just return a, returning a Boolean, okay? So it should return true. So all, for all of these, these first tests, uh, we're, we're checking balanced expression. So what do parentheses match does um, is if you give it an expression where the parentheses are balanced, um, it should return true. And you give, if you give it a mismatched expression where the parentheses don't match, it should return false, all right? So that should tell you the signature. Um, is something like that, right? So we take a string as input, some parentheses expressing, and again, um, I encourage you not to use abbreviations, even though I sometimes fall in that habit. Although I don't like that name, but maybe I'll come up with something better later. So, um, so we take some expression, um, some, some expression which is a string, and we'll return a Boolean result here, right? Um, and since this returns a Boolean, um, we can make a stub function pretty easily by say returning true. And that would pass half of our test anyway, right? Um, although, you know, don't forget your function documentation. So, so maybe another good name for this method might have been our parentheses balanced or something like that. So uh, might have been a better name because we're really testing if they're they're balanced. But um, Test if the given expression, um, which is a string, uh, of a um, of, of, uh, of some parentheses, um, it's balanced or not. So this is a string of. The uh, parentheses expression that we are to test here. It returns a Boolean result um, true if the parentheses are balanced, false if not. And we'll make a stub here as usual um, so we can test if our um, code is compiling and running. i close off some of these others here. We're kind of done with the L stack. There we go. Um, so yeah, that'll actually get a lot of stuff to pass, but um, it's kind of it's not really doing anything right now. And, and we do need to be able to correctly tell if parentheses are unbalanced here if, to get this implemented. So, uh, oh yeah, in this case, oops, um, Uh, 
Um, still got all my tests failing from the um, um, the L stack. So, um, but, but yeah, so I won't go looking for that. But yeah, the first one uh, will be failing was taken for false, right? Until we get this implemented. So let's look at the um, description of that. So there, there's pseudocode algorithm for this second task, um, right? Um, and you'll want to start with this because, um, so I gave you an example of a good way to um, to, to pull out the characters so you can test these, all right? So, um, Uh, somebody had a comment about the uh, same screen all the time. Um, so uh, let me check my screen sharing. But, but so you're not seeing my code here. Let me check the share here. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I don't know if I had the right, I don't know if I had the wrong screen on there before. Sorry if I did, uh, I'll have to check the video, but, uh, but yeah, I won't be able to go back and record those again, so. Um, so, so for the pseudocode, it's nice if, if you, you know, so if you're given a string, uh, it's pretty easy to to iterate through this character by character because you can treat string objects um, as as arrays of characters basically whether it's a string type or a string literal um, like we do here so um, so in this case uh, the s ver um, I probably sh maybe I should modify this but uh, uh, s is like a string. Um, it's not like a array of characters. So, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a C++ string uh, instance, string class. So, so anyway, but, but if you have a string, um, um, you can iterate over the characters one by one just by using uh, indexing, right? So that, that allows you to do uh, a loop like this. So for each character in your expression, so, so each character in that parentheses expression, um, you want to do this. So um, so if it's an open print, so all of our expressions are just going to be open print or closing print here. So if it's an open print, you just push it on the stack. And if it's a closing print, um, that's how you check if, if things are matching or not. So if it's a closing print, if the stack is empty, then the answer is false um, because we, we weren't able to match the current closing print. So you want to return false in that case. Otherwise, you want to pop the stack. Um, and that that matches one one closing print with an open print, right? Um, so and and um, huh? Yeah, I, I guess I didn't uh, have it in the pseudocode here, so. The, the other check to make, though, is that um, after the end, so, so um, you shouldn't just Im immediately return true. So, so after this loop, you might have exited the loop early by answering false, or one way you could, you could exit the loop is just by returning false here, or you could keep like a flag, um, um, right? But after the loop, um, if, if, um, if the answer wasn't explicitly false here, uh, you have to check your, your stack, right? So if the stack is um, um, empty, uh, then so, so you can use like one of your accessor methods, right? So if, if the stack is empty, um, then your parentheses match fine and you can return, tra return true. But if the stack isn't empty, that means that there were some unmatched opening parentheses. Right. 
So in that case, um, if the stack isn't empty, then you want to return um, false. Um, so yeah, at this point, I'm just re um, returning, I'm just sharing um, the um, um, GitHub, right? So I'm just talking about the implementation for task two here so far. Uh, but, but yeah, so now I switched over. So now you can see my dev box, right? Um, okay. All right, did that fix it? So here's the dev box. Okay, <laughs> there's the dev box, all right. So yeah, it's probably sharing the wrong thing there, most likely, so. Um, All right, so yeah, let's move on there. But um, that was a um, um, pretty long description of task two. Um, and, and yeah, once you get the, the stub function up and working, there's a stub function. If I didn't correctly, if I wasn't successful in showing the kind of the, the work here. So I did give the, um, I did give the, um, the signature for the task two function away. Um, as I was talking about it here. So it takes a string as input, returns a Boolean. Um, so, so yeah, um, unless there's some questions, I do want to move on, but um, uh, unless there's some questions, so, so yeah, th this one, I, I did give you a, a pretty good solid set of, of pseudocode in order to figure out. Oh, and then one thing to mention. Um, so you should be using one of the stacks. So either an A stack or an L stack. Um, again, yeah, I, I guess uh, I need to go back over um, my description of the assignment here. Um, so I didn't I didn't kind of state it explicitly, but but what you should be doing, so so I say that you need to be pushing or popping things from the stack, but you should be using a stack of strings. Um, so you can use either an L stack or an A stack, right? So I suggest you use your L stack, so that would be some more test of your push and pop method, um, right? So if you use an L stack of strings, um, you should be able to push, or, or, or actually you should use an, uh, an L stack of characters because you want to, um, because you want to push uh, parentheses onto the stack. Um, so you want to have like an L stack of, of characters in this case. So, so yeah, just to give that, you should be able to do something like an L stack. Um, of, of characters to have your parentheses stack, right? then you'll be able to do things like push characters on it, right? So again, for people that um, are still haven't done a whole lot of, of C or C++ coding, you know, single quotes are character literals um, and double quotes are used for string literals. So, so here, since we're making a stack of characters, a linked list stack of characters, uh, we have to push character literals on there, like a, a single quotes here. So that should compile and run. Well, that's that's kind of the type of stack that you would need for um, well, for this task too. Anyway. Um, 
All right, so let's let's talk about the other tasks here. I'll go to maybe twelve fifteen. That's about when we when I started. And, um, um, so, um, like I said, you know, all the rest of these tasks we're writing regular C plus plus functions. So for this one, let's go ahead and um, um, so I gave you a pseudocode again. Let, let's go ahead and uncomment the uh, unit test for the task three so we can see what it's doing. So um, task three is kind of like a little puzzle. So if you're given uh, an input, again, you're given an input, which is uh, strings. Um, the string is always going to be a sequence of I's and D's, right? So um, given this, this um, input, you have to return another string. So this, this maps from an input string to an output string. So, so we're not returning a Boolean this time. We're ter returning another string here. Um, but if you have an I, um, so, so the, the string that you return always has to have one character more than the input string. So if I have an input string of one, uh, we're going to return an output string or a result string with two characters in it, one, two. And if I have an input string with two characters, we're going to return uh, an output string with three characters in it, one, two, three, okay? And then the, the characters on the input string tell you what should happen for each step. So if I have an I, that means that that should I should increase between character one and two. If I have two eyes, that means I should have three characters um, and I should increase from one to two and increase my numeric, my, di my digit from two to three, right? And likewise for the D, um, if you have a D, that, that means you have to decrease, right? So if I have a single D, that means my resulting string should have two characters um, and they should decrease from two to one, right? Um, if I have two Ds, that means my resulting string should have three characters and I should decrease both times, three to two and then two to one. So that's kind of what this puzzle is. That's, that's what these sequences. Another result of this is, is that, you know, if I have, um, um, what is this? Um, if I have one, two, three, four, like six digits, um, that means that my, my, my value should be one through seven, okay? So, so for six digits, I'm always gonna have the values one through seven. For three digits, I'm always gonna have the values one to four. For, for eight, uh, for, for seven digits as input, I'm gonna have always have the eight. Um, so, so for a string of seven inputs, I'm always gonna have the digits uh, one through eight, right? But if I have a mixture of I's and D's, these digits might be mixed up, right? So for example, if I say increase then followed by decrease, I should have three digits in my resulting string. Um, and then the, bit, the digit should be one, two, and three. But in this case, I need to increase first of all. So I have to go from one to three, and then I have to decrease from three to two, right? So that, that's kind of what the puzzle is. If I say decrease, increase, again, I should have three digits, one, two, and three, but I first have to decrease, so go down from two to one, and then increase um, from one to three. And this last test is a more um, complex um, example. So in this case, um, oh, yeah, so kind of as a complication also, so some of these represent digits 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, just to make it even more complex, right? So uh, I can't remember exactly, but, but yeah, so there's something like, um, I guess there's like 22, there's, there's 21 digits, so we should end up with, uh, there's an input size of 21, so we should end up with like 22 digits here. So initially we increase uh, and then we decrease and then we, uh, so we should increase, decrease, uh, increase. So we uh, increase to six and then so, okay. 
um, and you might want to think about how, how would you solve that doing that writing that function you know on your own right um, it turns out it's not that difficult to write if you use a stack so, so that's kind of the whole purpose of this right so if you follow this pseudocode uh, again if you have a stack of, of, um, of um, characters Um, you want to start by keeping track of, of our index, right, uh, for our input. So this is the in index um, for our input string. So, um, um, so if this pseudocode isn't quite um, um, clear enough, um, I probably shouldn't have said push character here. So what you really want to be doing is pushing um, a, a number like zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, so even though you use like a, 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 a stack of characters, um, um, you, you need to be pushing like a, a value, a, a, a number on here, right? And that's going to correspond to the um, um, your your index number, right? Um, although it should be index plus one, right? Because we, we want the values to be one, two, three, four, five instead of zero, one, two, three, four um, as a result here, right? Um, So, um, and the way I'm suggesting that you construct the result to return is um, each time you're popping one of those characters off of there, uh, you should append it to the end of a, a string. Um, so call it what you want, like result or something. But, but that should be a, a C++ string. And then you can append characters onto the end of strings pretty easily. So for example, by using um, the plus operator, uh, to append uh, uh, characters, right? But yeah, each each of these pops should allow you to grow um, the string there. So. so, so basically, the decision that you're making is that uh, you you just you always push the index index plus one. Uh, onto your stack of characters, right? So, so some somewhere on there you'll have to convert this. So, so you could use a stack of integers, right? So you could you could use a stack of integers and just push an integer on there, uh, and that. But then when you pop it off, you'd have to convert your integer into a character value to um, append it onto your result string. Or you could use a stack of characters, like I was saying. But in that case, then you have to convert you know, your, your values uh, index plus one into a character before you push it on to your stack of characters. So, so either way it should work, right? Um, but yeah, the way you're making your decision is um, if, if the character uh, is either an I um, or if you process all the characters, then you wanna pop um, the value from the stack and append that to your results. Right? 
All right. So, um, so yeah, you'll have to figure that out. Um, so, so I've left a lot unsaid still there, um, but, um, um, but that pseudocode should lead you in the right direction um, to get your uh, task three decode uh, ID sequence working, right? And again, the way it should work um, is it should take a string as input and return a string as a result. All right, so yeah, I need to wrap up. Um, so let's, let me, let me just discuss for five minutes the, the task four and task five. So these are related. Um, so basically we're gonna be implementing a sort using stacks. Um, and so, so these last two are some practice using stacks, but it's also some practice uh, writing recursive functions again. Um, So if you look at the, the test for task four, uh, we're first implementing um, a function called uh, insert item um, on sorted stack, right? So basically what it should do, so, so you know, if you just look through the examples, um, that, that might describe it, right? So whenever you insert an item on a sorted stack, um, it should keep the, the stack in sorted order. And so it, it assumes that the stack you give it is already sorted, okay? So this, this function won't work if you give it an unsorted stack. But if the, if the stack is sorted, um, it should just put the item into the stack in its, its correct place to keep the stack sorted, right? So if, if you insert an item on an empty stack, um, the result is just the, the items is now in the stack. Um, but if you insert an item on a stack with one item, um, um, there is something that needs to happen, right? So here, the, we, we, sort, we, we keep the, the stack sorted um, in uh, decreasing order, right? So the largest value should be at the top of the stack, followed by the next largest item, and so on, right? So if I insert seven um, onto a, a sorted stack, seven should end up at the top of the stack and four at the bottom. And then if I insert two, two is now the smallest item. So you should have, end up with seven, four, two. And then we insert like an item that should end up somewhere in the middle of the stack. So we end up with seven, six, four, two. That, that's what, what should be happening um, as a result of, of calling the insert item on sort of stack. Um, so how do you implement that? So again, um, you're given a, a stack as input, right? So notice um, we're actually passing in uh, a stack um, and the value to insert on the stack as, as input, right? Um, and then uh, to implement the insert item on sort of stack, you're going to be creating a second stack, like a temporary stack. So, um, so given an input stack and you create a temporary stack, basically what you want to do is you want to pop items off of the input stack um, until the value at the top of the stack, you, and you can use top um, to determine that. So once the item on the top of the stack is greater than the item we want to insert, um, you need to pop the item off the input stack and push that to the temporary stack, okay? And then once you get to that point, you can insert it to its correct location. So, so at that point, um, all the items on the input stack are less than or equal to the item that we want to insert. So then you can push the item on the, onto the input stack, right? Um, and then now you need to pop the items back off of your temporary stack and insert them back onto the input stack, right? So a lot of practice with stacks here.
And for this to work, uh, and this is an important point here. So for all this to work, we have to actually pass that stack in by reference, okay? So again, remember the difference between pass by value versus pass by reference is important here. Um, if we pass in that stack um, to our function by value, it would make a copy of the stack. But we don't want that to happen. We want to pass in the stack by reference so that when we, we modify the stack by pushing a new value somewhere in the middle of it, potentially. I mean, where you push this value depends on the value. It could end up being pushed as the, the, the new front of the stack or the new back of the stack. Um, but, but anyway, so it is important that, that you pass in the value by reference or else your function won't work. Right. Oh, and, and, and another thing that we throw in here, your function actually has to be, so as a final wrinkle, your function actually has to be a template function, okay? Because, um, we can pass in like stacks of integers. So, so in this first test, we pass in uh, an L stack of integers. Um, but we can also pass in like stacks of strings, right? So you can't just hard code it to say, I accept my function accept, accepts um, a, a stack of strings or a stack of integers. You have to write a templatized version. This is a regular C++ function, but it needs to be a template function again. That takes uh, a stack of um, some type T um, so that you can pass and, and use it for all of our tests here, right? All right. Um, so yeah, like I said, I kind of do want to wrap up here. Um, so once you, that, that's probably the toughest function to write. So there's a couple of, of, of new things that you have to, to do there. I mean, you have to be using your stack, using stacks. Um, and um, you have to write a uh, a regular fun a regular C function or C++ function, but it has to be a template function, right? So it has to take in um, a stack of some generic type T, right? And then you have your temporary stack has to be a stack of generic type T, right? Again, for your temporary stack, you have to, 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 to um, declare it to be a concrete, either an L stack um, or um, an A stack, and, and you should probably go ahead and use an L stack of some, but of some generic type T in this case. Implement your function. All right, and then um, if you get the insert item on stack working, a sorted stack is probably a little bit easier. Um, Although again, um, sort stack um, is going to be a template function. Uh, but if you figure out how to write a template function for task four, um, you can write, you can use your new learned knowledge to write that for task five here. Um, but again, you know, when you call sort, um, So when we call sort stack, um, it, it just takes a stack of items. Uh, that, that stack needs to be passed in by reference because we're expecting, you know, if the sort if the if the stack is not sorted, that it, it's sorted after we call that, right? And it's, it's sorted, you know, from the highest item ends up at the top down to the lowest item as a result of calling this, right? Um, and, and again, though, it's it's a template function because we can give you a stack of um, of integers, 
like we do here for some of these tests, or we can give you a stack of strings, right? So, so it should, so it needs to be a template function that takes a stack of some generic type T and sorts them, right? So, and it's a void function, so it doesn't return anything. It, it returns something implicitly by sorting the, the stack that you pass in by reference here. Um, and then this this should be a recursive function. So we do a little bit of practice using recur of, of 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 recursion here. So hopefully you learn recursion well, writing recursive functions. So the base case is, is that if the if the stack is empty, so you can test the stack by calling the is empty method on the stack. So if it's empty, you don't have to do anything. Just so uh, an empty stack is sorted by definition. Um, So, but then the general case, if the stack isn't, isn't empty, uh, take the top item off the stack, call sort stack recursively on the now smaller stack. So after you pop the top item off the stack, your stack is, is one smaller, call sort stack on that one smaller stack. And then on return, um, so, so you know when you call sort stack, it should have sorted the stack. So now the stack should be sorted. Um, after you return from calling sort stack. And now you can call your insert item on sorted stack to insert that item that you popped off onto the now sorted stack, right? So again, I hope this one, this one should be easier than the previous one, although we are using recursion, but it's a, it's a straightforward recursion, right? So our base case is that if the stack is empty, do nothing. And if it's not empty, pop the top item off, call sort recursively on the stack that's one smaller, and then call insert item on sorted stack on the presumably now sorted stack. All right. Um, yeah, so I've gone longer than I wanted there. Um, any um, any quick questions about any of those tasks that anybody want to ask before I uh, stop the session here? All right. So as usual, um, I'll be monitoring. You know, starting this evening and tomorrow. Uh, um, people working on the assignment seven. Um, and um, I'll get this video posted. Sorry, it started late, uh, but uh, yeah, that's it for the session. And I will see everybody um, on your GitHub repositories then.